Thank you for your interest in renting our 20 foot bay boat. Uh, I want to go over a few things to help you with success on catching fish on the water. So safety is our number one priority when you're on the boat. I want to show you some things that's mandatory to have while we're out. All right, so first we have our throw device here. It's mandatory to have on the boat. Everything we're going over will be inside this compartment. We have two adult life uh, jackets here. We have one medium and then one small. If you need any additional life vests, please let me know uh, when you're renting the boat in the description. Uh, send me a message and we'll get that taken care of. We also have a paddle here uh, just in case you need it. Uh, it will be located in the large storage up front. And then lastly, we have a fire extinguisher down here. So if you get stopped by the Coast Guard, these are some things that they're going to uh, ask you for. That's uh, where everything is located. Everything is serviceable uh, and you should have no issues. If you do get stopped by the Coast Guard or the game wardens and they want to see any kind of paperwork, it'll be located all up here in the front storage. You'll open up this bag here. Everything you need, all the paperwork will be located right here. So we'll go over a few basic uh, operating procedures. First, you have your uh, safety switch right here. In order for the boat to start, you have to push it in the red, put it in like that. This piece right here will clip to a belt buckle or life vest or whatever you have attached to you. Just in case you fly out the boat, this right here will get pulled and the engine will stop. So this is the uh, circle keys for the engine. If you need to uh, lock any compartments, it's gonna be the square key. If it's forward and drive or uh, back and reverse, the boat will not start. To go over a few of the switches up here, you have your horn, which is mandatory to have. You have your uh, auxiliary switch uh, for your accessories. This right here will turn on your GPS, which will, should already be turned on by the time you get to the boat. You have a bilge and your uh, bait well. So your bilge, if you are to take on water, it will cut on automatically uh, and it will start pumping water out. Your bait well, if you decide to catch bait um, with a cast net or if you are buying bait, live bait, and you wanna keep it alive, you can keep it alive up front in the bait well. Turn this on and it'll keep it circulating. Your live well is for the back of the boat. We'll show you that in a second, but this right here will keep water in your uh, in the live well and keep it circulating as well. And then you have power for your lights. So your small light here will go to the bow of the boat, which is the front, and then the large light will go to the stern, which will be in the back. So this is the live well here. If you plan to keep fish alive, uh, just turn your live well on, switch, and it will pump full of water and it'll keep your fish uh, alive in here. All right, this right here under the seat is your bait well. If you, like I said, if you have any live bait, this is where you're gonna put it. Turn on your bait well switch, and this right here will get full of water and it'll keep your fish healthy. All right, so some additional things that will be on our boat for your convenience. Inside this bag here, we do have fish grippers. We have pliers, and we have multiple fish, uh, fish grippers and pliers here. And then if you're needing some assistance pulling a hook out, we also have this as well. Feel free to use any of this. Uh, if, it, if you lose one or break one, just let me know. So if you need a bucket for any reason, uh, if you have females on the boat and they're needing to use the restroom, uh, or you just want to use it for, uh, to keep any kind of fish alive in here, you can do that as well. If anything uh, were to happen and you needed a uh, long rope, we have it stored up front here. I also have two over here in the rear of the boat. Underneath the seat, you'll find two smaller ones on each side of the boat. So if you need a net for that big fish, I will keep the net here on the boat. Once again, if you lose it or break it, please let me know ahead of time. Thank you. So the trolling motor is a Minn Kota Tarova. If you're wanting to get a head start on learning how to operate the remote, you can YouTube videos. Uh, there are plenty of them out there and it'll help you out whenever it's uh, time for you to use it. Uh, this thing will do multiple uh, things as far as trolling, uh, anchoring, uh, and uh, if you want to drift and stay on a certain course, it'll help you out as well. If you need any additional information while you're on the boat, this pamphlet right here for the motor will be here inside uh, where the rest
rest of the tools are. So to deploy the trolling motor, all you simply have to do is push down on the lever here with your foot, and then this right here will go down, just like that. Once it's deployed, you can uh, go ahead and turn your remote on, and it'll uh, link together and you can start using it. Once you're done using the trolling motor and you want to move spots or you are done for the day, you push on the same pedal with your foot, grab right here on the underneath the head, bring it down, turn it sideways, and then just pull it back. Once you hear it click, that's how you know you're good to go. So if the trolling motor were to malfunction and you are still needing wanting to fish, we do have the anchor here. Uh, just whatever spot you want to get to, you can go ahead and drop anchor and it will keep you in place. This is a fairly light boat, so it doesn't take much to hold it in place. So we do have a bimini top here if you do plan to use it. Uh, it does come with a cover. Just make sure when you do pull the cover off, you store it somewhere so it doesn't fly away. Even though this is a quality top, uh, if you do plan to go over 30 miles an hour, you do want to put it back down um, just so it doesn't break and the wind doesn't uh, blow it off. Back here we have the transducer. This right here is going to help your fish finder work. This right here is what uh, will show you how, how deep you are, the water temperature, and where the fish are. If you get too shallow, this right here will not work and you'll notice on a GPS that it just kind of go blank. Uh, it's a very good indicator that you do need to get deeper. Okay. So depending on what the configuration is with the weight, um, this right here will run up to 49 miles an hour. Uh, however, just know that if you are making turns, you are slowing down before you make the turns. There aren't any brakes on the boat, so just keep that in mind whenever you're operating. So let's talk about some things that will not be on the boat that you need to bring. First will be rods and tackle, so any kind of rods. If you want to do catfishing or fish for reds, just make sure you have your rods set up for whatever you're fishing for. Um, as well as bringing your own tackle and bait. Uh, we also won't have a cast net on here, so if you want to catch live bait, make sure you bring your own cast net. I do have four rod holders available. You're going to have two in the rear and two up front. That, uh, that way you can go ahead and set them in there while you're drifting or if you're just anchored. If you do need a cooler, I can provide a small cooler. However, just remember, uh, once you return the boat, I have to bring the cooler back with me. So if you have any fish, you need to be able to have something to transfer it to. Hope you enjoy your time uh, here with the Low Bay 20. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me through email or text or through Boat Setter. And if you haven't already, make sure you scroll through Boat Setter and look up the information about the deposit and liability just so you're up to speed on what is offered to you.